um, Joey, after his early days of running around Woodbrook Youth Center and the Savannah, I expect, um, he attended Fatima College where he started his cricket career. And um, he, from day one, I think everybody could have seen that Joey was an exceptionally talented young cricketer. He liked his football, he was a good footballer, a good club footballer, but I think cricket was his passion, cricket was what he wanted. He was a stroke maker and um, he batted at number four or five on the team. He was impetuous too, eh? I mean he was not one to, that you could keep quiet for lengthy periods of time. He had, it was a part of his development that he eventually became the kind of player that, that he was, who could mix, you know, sort of a defensive period in his innings and then convert it into attack and so on. I remember in St. Kitts, we were playing Combined Islands against Trinidad and he was, he was batting well, good pitch, pitch was good and Trey could bat and you stay batting and when you see execute a good cover drive ball, you would flick this head ball and the, and the hair would flick around and you could see he felt good about himself. He was tremendously talented. He had a great desire to do as best as possible. He knew we were in an era where the great players were around, the, the Gary Sobers, the Rohan Kanais, the Simonises. He knew he had to bat with it and he did. I, guess, I thought he was rather successful. I think that, that the, those analyses that he used to make really bore fruit when he took over the captaincy because then he had to put his mind at work in the manner that he did before but in, 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 in much more serious circumstances being the captain of the team. And I think, to be honest, that Joey was probably the best captain in the West Indies bar Frank Warren at the period of time that he played. His own leadership, his own leadership, um, making that 10 men under him, believe in himself. There, there was a, a great and quick transition in Joey's career in his maturity. At college, he was a jovial, sort of charismatic type of person who didn't care whether Sunday fell on a Thursday. But when he grew older, he became more responsible. He was a non-compromiser. He would go in there and get things done. He didn't mean a thing when he sort of said insulting things to people, but he was always quick to recover and uh, become friends again. He didn't bear malice, but he wanted a job done and he wanted to get it done in the best way possible. And that was Joey Caruso. Th that's the hallmark of that man. He wanted success. He knew what he wanted. He knew the people who would help him to get it, and he went for it. Um, he was irresistible. And you would see Sir Vivian Richards or Sir Gary Silvers West all around him. And he will capture their attention. And that, that just tells you about the, the, the character of the man. You know, he is someone that people definitely respect. He had great awe about him. And, um, you know, some, a, a son that Trinidad and Tobago should be very, very proud of. What he couldn't understand was, why aren't these fellas committed to this game? Why don't they understand that they're representing the West Indies? What happened to their work ethics? He couldn't understand at all. He couldn't understand that there are players in this day and age who are playing for the West Indies who didn't have the discipline and the commitment to this great game. But he also, you know, came at a time where getting into the West Indies team was um, not easy. Peru came back from, from Australia in 68. Um, got his 100 against New Zealand, that um, I really got to know Joey um, when, you know, he probably retired after, after, after 72. And I think at the end of retirement, I realized that there was someone that you know, maybe should have, could have, Captain the West Indies, brilliant mind. Uh, Joey would, would, would stay up during the wee hours in the morning and know who was from the top end, 
quote from the bottom end, in the event of, and we'll call it one permutations and combinations, and know right away that this is the plan, and if this plan did not work, I have a contingency plan in the back of, the, back of the mind. And I suppose if one was to give him a rating or a score, I suppose he was successful more time than he, he had failed. You know, so it's, to speak about his brilliant mind, he kind of saw how the game will develop before most other people. You know, I remember a couple of occasions before I became the, a permanent captain of the West Indies team. Once was in uh, Australia. I think Courtney Walsh uh, got injured during a match. And that trust me in the position as leader at the time. And I remember calling Joey because obviously it's impromptu, you don't know what to do. And I called Joey the night before and um, he played a significant part in you know, how I went about dealing with the next day. Another very important um, test match that Joey, I could say, helped me win was that match against India in Barbados. I think India just had uh, a paltry 120 yard to get in the fourth innings of the game. And obviously with the likes of Azruddin and Tendulkar, Mandraker, I think we're still there. Um, it was going to be a tough ask. Walsh, again, the captain at the time, injured and out. So I had Ambrose, uh, Bishop, Franklin Rose and Dylan. And uh, we planned the night before, how are we going to bowl? Who are we going to bowl at which batsman? And um, the way how the plan worked out, obviously the kudos went to, to Brian and the team, myself and the team at the time, but Joey was a, a very, very important part in that victory. And he never you know, told anyone, or he was not interested in, in, in the kudos. He just wanted to know that West Indies you know, did not lose against India at that point in time. And um, just looking at the space during the decline of West Indies cricket and the fact that he could not do much about it, you know, it really saddened me and I'm sure it, it was it weighed heavily on his heart. And um, Joey is the West Indian true and true. You know, he might have been the best Trent to be a captain, but obviously I believe, as they say, he's maybe the best captain the West Indies have never had. Joey Carew's intelligence will have left this country very, very short now that he's gone. Great captains have their teams in their pockets. They walk around their teams. Their teams are happy to be, to be with them. And you got that impression about Joey Karu. Obviously, as an administrator, as a selector, as somebody that was mentoring young cricketers, he must have done a great deal for cricket in general, Trinidad and, and the Caribbean in particular. As a tactician, you couldn't beat Joey Karu. You couldn't beat him. He, he was immaculate in his field placing. You know? And, and he wondered, what's all this for? But he wanted to have people in the precise positions that they were supposed to be in. And this could only come from a man who studied this game. That was the joy of I think the one thing missing um, would have been an opportunity to challenge himself even further. And that's maybe being able to work with the, the best young talent in a kind of, 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 of an academy, a training program. But I think a, a, a role like that would have brought maybe another dimension out to Joey Kuru because of that very great brain, that very great brain. Um, he tries as much as possible to make mistakes around Marion, you know, his wife. You know, she's a lot more lenient when it comes to, um, to discipline in us. So, um, you know, crossing Joey is more of a, a serious look, a little bit of a quiet moment, and you know that he's disappointed in you and um, you know that you have done something wrong. Well, when you're young, your face is slipper being salted you very accurately. You know, he was a cricketer, so he wouldn't miss you, you know. He was cool, he was disciplined, he was a disciplinarian, but he wasn't a person who would keep things in for long, you know? If you had a diverse opinion to him, you, you definitely 
he would definitely argue with you and and say ah you don't know what you're talking about but you know it wouldn't last for long he, he would you would then go on to another subject and, and that would be gone you know but maybe two weeks time he would he would rib you about about the same subject he, he hadn't forgotten it but it wasn't a, it wasn't a major issue but he he would give you a little ribbon especially if um especially if he turned out to be correct <laughs> i've always felt that he didn't get the opportunity to lead a west indies team in the way that he should because there was no doubt in my mind that after Frank Worrell, Joey Carew is the best captain we would have had. Joey would really study the game of cricket and as cricket evolved over the years, he would adjust and adapt to those changes in the game. He had a very keen eye for weaknesses in opposition players. He had a very good eye also for where particular players may be weak and his field placing was always exceptionally precise and would vary depending on who the batsman at the crease was. Why aren't these fellas committed to this game? Why don't they understand that they're representing the West Indies? What, what happened to their work ethics? He couldn't understand at all. He couldn't understand that there are players in this day and age who are playing for the West Indies who didn't have the discipline and the commitment to this great game. I think what made that connection between Joey and myself was the fact that we both love cricket and another sport called horse racing. Joey was a big horse racing fan. I am a big horse racing fan. I will continue to be a big, very big horse racing fan and we made that connection through racing more than cricket. Obviously we would meet at cricket rounds and we would talk a little bit about cricket and even when we are talking horse racing, cricket would get involved to some degree. But the last few years, I would say the last five, six, seven years, I tried to get Joey to talk less about cricket. To be honest, Joey got affected greatly by the fact that the West Indies were not doing well. Joey was so emotional about his cricket and about West Indies cricket that it used to upset him. And I used to say to Joey, Joey, let us not talk about cricket. You're getting upset again. Let us talk about something that we both love that will both make us laugh. Let us talk about what we love, horse racing. And we we'll talk about horse racing a lot. Joey would call me wherever I was, whether I was in England, in Miami, in Australia, as a matter of fact. The last time I spoke to Joey Carew, I was in Adelaide just before the Test match here with, with, in the last Ashes series. And we would talk about other sorts of things. Joey, he couldn't get away from cricket. We all would have little jokes about him. I, we like nearest the line, which would mean that he, he liked to he likes to bet on a on a favourite. Uh, and no no race day we'd ever leave um, racing, and and he would have won. He, he always lost, whether whether he won uh, four or five thousand dollars or he lost ten dollars. He always lost. So there was no day you could say, well, Joey had a good day today. No way. <laughs> Joey was one way. Um, he got it from his father. His grandfather was an astute horseman. He was not the, the, the cricketer that Joey became, but as a horseman, my grandfather was very astute and he passed on that knowledge to Joey. You sit down and ho talk horses to Joey, you, you, you hear him and you hear him talk about fitness and talk about training regimes and whatnot. You're listening to a horseman speak. He was just as good with the horses as he was on the cricket field. He always had a passion for horse racing. I mean, as I, I said, it, it, I don't know which one he, he preferred more, cricket or horse racing, but it, it, it must have been on par because, I mean, it, it was a sort of a love and i give you examples. I mean, if I had, didn't have a horse until maybe the fourth race on a day and say, but Joey, let's go up a bit late. You'd say, no, 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 we have to reach for the first race. And, and you know, that sort of passion, I mean, not everybody has it and he would be, he had it. He definitely had a passion for the, for the game. You ask how much I need you, must I explain? I need you, oh my darling. You look at Joey and Marion and you can tell there's a great uh, love that is going on. It's not 
uh, there or there for everyone to see. I never saw or heard my mother bad dog my father. Never, ever, ever. And vice versa. Um, I know they, they talk about a perfect relationship. It cannot be. Well, that was as perfect as you can get. Yeah, I learned so much about love in all aspects. And love is certainly about two key words, commitment and respect. You know, and Joey certainly demonstrated that, especially towards the last towards the last two years when he found out his wife had cancer. And it was a sad moment in our lives. And in typical Joey fashion, he rose to the occasion. He loved us, you know, as, as his son. Joey was a father to me. A mentor, yes, but a father and somebody who looked after me. And, um, you know, in all... Uh, Capacity in, in, in all facets of life, so he played an important part. But there's always the old saying people give you signs when they, when they leave it. And the sign that Joey gave us was basically when we made the arrangement for him to come home, he traveled in his, his niece's car, and the men would have traveled behind him and made the arrangement because he needed to be wheelchaired, put in a wheelchair, and come into the house. And when we arrived at home, Joey was not there. Um, so uh, one, one, uh, we got worried because we think well, something happened to him anyway. But really and truly, Joey asked his niece to take him for a drive around Savannah. I was one thing I, I would remember my father that generally speaking, every time we went for a drive or we went to the market on a Sunday, my father will always say, David, before you go, let's take a drive around Savannah. You know, so, so that was what I would hold dear that he got his wish. He took his final drive along the salon. He was known fondly to many as knowledge and that was because I think people all over the Caribbean and, and the wider world recognized the knowledge that Joey had in cricket. You know he went on after he finished playing the game he became a selector, he became an administrator and most importantly he became a mentor to so many young players and I think the legacy that Joey would have left would be as I said for people playing the game to play the game with that passion, play the game with that commitment, play the game with that thirst for knowledge and to understand the game keeps changing and you have to stay up to date with the game. To me that would be the legacy that Joey would have left for the young people coming up playing cricket today. Joey was definitely one of the brilliant students of the game. Joey would discuss things in its entirety. He would never let any sort of fault slip up and not talk about it. He would analyze players in a way that you wouldn't understand. And this is one of the assets, I think. And this is his legacy. Joey Carew's intelligence will have left this country very, very short now that he's gone.